Hello and welcome to another Code Pro tutorial. Today we are going to be learning the basics of unit testing and test driven development in iOS. We are going to learn how to write and run our own unit tests and understand how to write good testable code so that we can hopefully make our apps crash less, which is always a good thing. So if that sounds interesting to you, open up Xcode, create a new iOS application, and let's begin. So for unit testing, we're going to start off creating a project the way we normally would with a new iOS application. But once you get to this screen to choose the options for the project, after you've named it, you're going to want to make sure that you check off include unit tests here um, after you've picked your language. And that's going to create the testing target that we need where we're going to implement our test code. So I'm just going to go ahead and create the project. And let's take a look at what we get here for our targets. So when you have your project selected, you'll see that you have your app target here and that you have your unit testing target here. And you'll have a separate folder for it here where all of your test code will live and it'll have the capability to test all of your app code through this at testable import uh, line included right here. So once you've set up your test target, we need something to test. And what I've done is created something for us to test. And this is a class that I created called student. And feel free to pause the video to copy down the code here uh, onto your um, Xcode. But basically, um, it's a very simple class where a student has a first and a last name, uh, an array of friends, uh, an initializer for the first name and the last name, uh, a function to add a friend, which just takes a friend and appends it to the friends array that they have, uh, and then two methods for a valid first name and a valid last name that basically say that valid names have to have a length greater than three. So they can't have really short names just for this example. So we're going to unit test this class in particular. So if we go back over to our uh, unit tests here, you can see that we have this XC test in this XC test case. And this is coming from the XC test framework, which is basically the Xcode test framework that defines and contains all of the testing templates that uh, an XC test case is going to use. So the structure kind of follows like this. You have a setup method here where you can set up anything you want to test. You have a teardown method here, which gets called when the test method has completed or after each invocation. Uh, you have an actual test method here, but this is an example one, so we're going to write our own. And then you have something here for performance testing that you can measure inside of this closure or this block right in here. So for our cases, these are going to be very simple tests. And we're not going to do any performance testing or really kind of any setup or teardown. Um, so rather than use the file here, we're going to create our own. So we're going to go and go to the unit test uh, folder here, and we'll right click, and we'll do a new file. And uh, we'll do a new Swift file. And we're going to call this student tests. The target that needs to be selected is the unit testing target, not your app. Um, by selecting your target, you're saying that this code belongs to this target and it's going to be executed in this context, not in the context of the app. So once you've done that, go ahead and click Create. And let's just go do a um, open the Assistant Editor here. And on our right side, let's go back and use the original file for tests as a template for our student tests. So uh, the first thing we want to do is import XC test or our test framework that gives us all of the uh, templating uh, classes that we need. And then we're going to create our class called class student tests, which uh, derives from the XC test case. And what I'm going to do here is, um, since we're not going to use setup and teardown, uh, we're going to create our own methods, so we're going to do a func called func test student test valid first name. And that's going to be the first test that we're going to implement. And one thing we also need to include is our at testable import, which basically says that the class we want to test, which is student.swift, belongs to the app target. You can see because over here, the target membership for the app is selected for a student not for the unit test tutorials. So by adding that at testable import, 
it allows the unit test to be able to see into our app code to know what to have access to the things to test. So we're going to do an app testable import the name of the app, which in my case is unit testing tutorial. So once we have that set up there, we should be good to go. And if you go to your little icon here, the test navigator, and you select it, um, you're going to see that if we build the project, let me build it, our new test shows up. And we have its own little selection, or its own section here. And if we expand it, we can see the test valid first name method is highlighted. If we hit the play button, we can run that method individually, which is going to start up the simulator and go through all the testing logic. And since there's really no guts in this method, no implementation, the tests are going to pass by default. If we wanted to run every test, we could hit the play button for the actual student test itself. So if I had another test, for example, func test valid last name, and then I run student tests, you're going to see that when this builds and runs, two tests are going to execute successfully uh, because nothing was really asserted inside of here. So let's actually start defining our tests uh, case by case and then run them and see what happens. But we need to identify what do we test. So looking at student, we can see here that, well, there's a couple of things we might be able to test piece by piece. We have some functions here that seem to be doing some name validation for the length. So we can test that these are working as expected. Same thing with friends. We can add a friend and we can verify that the count of the friends array is greater than zero, at least if there's one friend in the collection. Um, so we can, we can have three separate tests for each one of these pieces of functionality and verify that they're working under different scenarios. So if we wanted to start off with testing a valid first name, the first thing we'd want to do is create uh, an instance of a student. So we would create a uh, let student equals a student, and we'll have to go ahead and provide um, a name and a last name. So, so the question is, what are we testing? Well, we're testing that our first name dot count is greater than three. So what we really want to say is, how do we test that this logic works for when the first name is less than three, or let's just say two? Right? So if we change our first name to, for example, AJ, which is just a kind of two-letter name here, um, and we'll just call AJ uh, test for the last name, just because we're not going to use that right here. Um, and we wanted to assert, so let's just say that student.validFirstName should return true or false. So we provide in a two-letter name, and we just say we run XCT assert true, right? And we assert true on what? We assert true on student.validFirstName. Well, let's just run this and see what happens right now. So we run the test, and it builds our app, it starts our simulator, it gets everything ready, and you can see right away that it fails. Why does it fail? Well, we're not testing that, um, we're asking the wrong question. We want to say assert false. Why? Because we are testing the case where the first names count is less than three. So this should actually tell us, hey, this is not a valid first name because you're giving me a two letter name. So I'm gonna tell you that I'm false. And we can assert false here by running our valid first name method here. Now by asserting false, which is the correct way to test this, if we run our test again, watch what'll happen. So build runs and when we get here, you can see that we get the check mark, meaning that all of our tests passed. So it seems like our logic is working fine for valid first name. Now we probably want to rename our test. It's not really test valid first name, it's maybe test invalid first name. Because remember, we're, we're asserting that um, we're going to get back faults here um, because our, our AJ is less than three. So what about testing a valid last name to make sure everything's working? I mean, obviously we know this is probably going to work, but but if we took this same student here and copied that, um, and we, we basically do this here, but we change this line. Instead of XCT assert false, XCT assert true. Assert true on student dot valid last name. Now it's valid last name because it's a four character string. So if we run this, 
and it's going to build our project and run it, you can see that all of our tests pass. Everything's good. We can also test uh, adding a friend, and we can do that by creating another function, uh, func test add friend. And we can start off just by copying our AJ student from up here, put him down below here. And we can create a friend, uh, let friend equals a student. Uh, we'll just call it a first name, Tom. Last name, test two. And so once we've set that up, uh, the first thing we can do is when we look at our student code here, when it's initialized, it's always initialized with friends set to zero. Until we add a friend, there should be no friends in the container. So we can assert that xct assert that the count of the friends is set to zero. So we can assert xct assert true, that at this point, that is a true fact, that there are zero friends in, in, in his array of friends. And if we build this, we can run that and just verify that that's working like we expect it to. And uh, let's see if it runs our test here, and it passes. So OK, so that's fine. So that sets us up. And then the very next thing we do is call student.addFriend. And we add in the friend, who is Tom. Let's just give him a name. We'll call him Tom instead of friend. And instead of student, we'll say AJ. So we'll do AJ and adds friend, adds Tom as his friend. And the, so what we need to test for now is uh, that instead of the count is zero, the count should be greater than zero. It should be one um, after we've added added. Uh, Tom to the uh, collection. So run it again. And uh, it looks like I still have a student here. I got to call uh, AJ. And now we'll run it. And uh, build succeeded, runs test and test pass. Now, if I said, you know, if I had forgotten to change that and I put, hey, it's still equal to zero, uh, what's it going to do? Well, it's going to fail the test. And you'll see a red X show up here like we did earlier. So as we start to write more complicated programs and apps, unit testing becomes much more important. And as we write our code, we want to make sure that we think about, is our code testable? And if it's not, how can we make it testable? Can we make our code isolated so that we don't have to bring in all the dependencies that are needed to be tested? Uh, and can we think of each method as we start to write them out of what are the possible inputs and outputs? what could break the function, um, and what does the function expect. And if we can think about that before we write our method, um, we can already kind of think of a test for it in our minds. And we could even write a test first, then write the method, and then test the method against the inputs, both good and bad, and verify that the functionality is working as expected. And once our project starts to grow to scale, we can go back and test everything that we have built tests for and make sure that things are still working uh, as expected once that project maybe changes for, from one development team to the next. Uh, we can easily go back and see the history of the tests and make sure that everything is accounted for um, and we can isolate problems quickly and fix them if things change in the future. And that wraps up this tutorial on unit testing. If you found this helpful, let me know. Go ahead and smash that like button. Consider subscribing to CodePro to stay up to date for all the latest tutorials and make sure to follow CodePro on social media. And as always, let me know in the comment section down below what tutorial you guys would like to see next. Thank you so much for stopping by and I'll catch you in the next one.